Now it's time to program your NodeMCU to serve a web page. We'll keep it simple at first just to make sure everything is working. First thing I'm going to do is give myself a little bit of white space up here so that I can add some code. And I'm going to include a library, the ESP8266 Wi-Fi library so that I can create a Wi-Fi network or connect to a Wi-Fi network. Once I've done that, I'm going to include another library the ESP8266 web server library. This is the library that allows me to serve web pages uh, however I'm connected to a network. Then I'm going to create a constant to define my SSID, the name of my network. I'm going to call mine ESP AP and then I'm going to put a Bacchus right here to differentiate mine from anyone else who might be in the same room as me. So uh, if you're in a classroom setting uh, and you have a ESP AP, I suggest you put your own last name right here. That way it's easy for you to tell your robot's uh, network from your neighbors. Then I'm going to say const char password. And I'm going to make a very simple password for the sake of this tutorial. You do need something that has eight characters in it. Next, I create the server object. And I have it listen to port 80, which is the, the standard port. And then the very first thing I have to do inside the setup is call delay. And I'm going to make it delay for 1000 milliseconds or one second. And that's, for some reason, the, the microchip needs some time before it's able to set pins and whatnot. The next thing I'm going to do is set pin mode 16, that's the onboard LED, to output. This is so I can get some feedback and when I turn the power on, I actually see that uh, that the microchip's on because, uh, in contrast to a regular Arduino, the Node MCU doesn't have a power LED. So we're going to sort of turn pin 16 into that for us by saying digital right, and I say pin 16, and this is the counterintuitive part. We have to set it low. It's uh, inverted, and so setting it low actually turns it on. Next, I'm going to create the network by saying Wi-Fi soft AP, and then I define the SSID. So this SSID up here is really this string of characters right here. That's what you will see when you try to connect. And then I need to put in the password, which is just this password right up here, and it was a semicolon. If you want to make your network open, you can just omit this password, but I, I recommend you go ahead and put in a password so that nobody accidentally or purposefully uh, hijacks your robot. Next, I'm going to define what happens when the server receives a request for uh, the root page, and I'm going to say handle root. That's the function I want it to execute when somebody requests the root page. This symbol right here, this slash, comes after the IP address. So whenever you go to a website and you don't type anything in after the .com or the .us, that's the root page. That's what this is signifying. After I do that, I'm going to begin the server. Server.begin and inside the loop down here, all I have to do is say server dot handle client. And so now what it's doing is it's constantly listening for connections and requests for web pages. The only one it uh, is defined to handle is the root page. Uh, and it, when that happens, it's going to call the handle root function. Now at this point we don't have a handle root function, so let's go ahead and de define it right down here. I'm going to say void handle root, and then have an 
opening curly brace and it creates a closing curly brace automatically and then I'm going to create a string variable called message and I'm going to set it equal to hello world we're doing this just to test it make sure everything's working and then I'm going to say server dot send so when this page is requested it's going to send uh, 200 code which means everything went okay it's going to let it know that it's a text slash HTML document and then it's going to send the message which in this case is just the hello world text once you've uploaded the program to your robot turn it on then using the device you plan to remotely control it with open its or connect to its network input the password you set and then navigate to the IP address 192.168.4.1 and you should see the words hello world now it's time to host the web page we created on the node MCU go back to cloud 9 before we begin we have to turn off an auto formatting feature right now when I type a quotation mark two are automatically created that's gonna mess us up so go to preferences and then user settings and code editor and see where it says auto pair brackets quotes etc we just need to turn that off once you've done that we also need to get rid of the trailing white space so right here if I arrow over you can see there's white space right there um, there's some down here to get rid of that we just go to tools strip trailing space now there's no white space right there. If I arrow over, it takes me to the next line. Now we need to create a cursor on every line. And to do that, I'm going to click on Edit, Selection, Select All, and then Edit, Selection, Split into Lines. So now I have a cursor on every single line. To get the cursor to the beginning of each line, I'm going to hit click on Go to line start. And I actually have to do that twice. So now I can see there's a cursor at the beginning of every single line. And all I need to do now is type a single quotation mark. And then I need to get the cursors back to the end of the lines. So I'm going to say go to line end. And then I need to put a slash, an N, and then another quotation mark. Once I have this, I can copy the entire document. So, edit, selection, select all, edit, copy, and I go back to the Arduino program. And in place of hello world, I can just paste that entire page right in here. So you can see string message equals and then it's got quotation starts, ends here, and then it starts and ends there again. This entire page is getting stored into the message variable. Make sure that it ends with a semicolon. Once you've done that, it's time to uh, add some code that will control the motors. So at the very top of our program, we're going to add an include for the servos the servo library and then uh, somewhere above the setup let's say um, right after we create the server object let's go ahead and create some servo objects servo left motor and servo right motor and then below that, somewhere inside the setup, 
we need to actually attach motors to those. So right here, I'm going to say left motor dot attach. And I'm going to attach that to pin 10. I think that's SD3. Uh, if you're looking at the node MCU 1.0. And then I'm going to say right motor attach. And we're going to attach that to D4. So the motors are now attached. Next I'm going to write uh, a stop signal for each one. So I'm going to say left motor dot right microseconds and I'm going to just say 1500. That's the stop signal for a servo motor. And we'll do the same thing for the right motor. And that should keep the robot from moving around when it first starts up. Once I've done that, uh, I need to go ahead and create the uh, handle remote control uh, function. And I need to call that function whenever we navigate to it. So if we look down inside of our page, every once in a while we request that page um, right here. In fact, we request that page about five times a second. So in order to have that page respond, we need to give our program instructions to follow when that page is requested. So right here, I'm going to add server.on and then the web page, remote control.html. And then the function that we're going to call, handle remote control. Since we haven't defined this function yet, We'll go ahead and do that right below the loop, the loop, right above handle root. And this function is just going to give each motor some instructions. We're going to subtract the argument for the left motor and we're going to convert it to an integer as well because it's sent as text through the URL and then we're going to do something similar for the right motor But this time we have to add because the orientation of those motors is reversed. We're going to grab the R argument, which corresponds to the right motor. After we do that, we're going to send a message back to the web page that says uh, everything's OK. We're going to send some text slash HTML that is just the time argument that was received. And that's for if uh, down the road you want to see how long it took for that message to go to your robot and then come back. You can see how, how big the delay was. If you've done everything correctly, you should see this web page when you browse to your Node uh, MCU's IP address. If I click Start, the robot responds. If you take the time to learn more HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, you can make uh, more sophisticated apps like this one here where uh, the position of all of my elements is uh, better laid out and the size, the relative size of these elements to the screen is uh, automatically set up when I open the web app. It also allows me to dynamically choose which 
axis I want to use for power and steering depending on the device that I'm using and invert them if necessary. This app even lets me keep track of the delay between how long it takes a message to go from my cell phone to the robot and back again.